Hello. Welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My website is letmeboreyou.com. <sighs> How are you doing? Are you alright? Are you okay? Are you well? I've literally just been woken up. Now some would argue, yeah, but it's four minutes to seven in the evening, you shouldn't really be in bed, should you? I was having a nap, having a nap. Is that alright with you? you, 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 you? I, was, I was tired, I just wanted to have a little nap. So I went for a nap about six o'clock. I got woken up three different times by Vinnie barking in my ear. The third time there was someone at the door, so it was a legit reason. I mean, I can't argue with that one. Someone at the door, he's gonna bark. That's, 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 I can't argue with that one. However, however, the other two reasons, because there's someone in the garden, and the new neighbour has a dog, a big, huge dog, and Vinny is affected by the fact that there's another dog living in the building. And every time he hears the dog, probably smells the dog, I guess they can smell each other, can't they, from a distance. Every time he knows that the dog's in the garden, Howls. It's not just like a normal bark. He howls like a wolf. Like, oh, oh. Okay, okay, maybe not quite like that, but and I just don't know what to do because this dog is too big. It's a XL bully. It's too big for Vinny to mess with. And Vinny's met met this dog and he's already barked at it and growled and stuff and just the the other dog doesn't seem to care. But which is lucky for him. Lucky for lucky for Vinny. However, the second that he does care is a problem. Because <laughs> He's, he's big, he's very, he's just so strong, you can just see, and apparently he's lost weight as well, so he'll be even bigger probably in a few weeks, so I don't know, I'm just, I don't know what to do, I mean the, the person, the neighbour's really nice, friendly, the dog seems really friendly as well, Vinny is playing up and whew, anyway that's enough seriousness maybe not no it is so last night after I made the recorded which is a, a pure gold just in case you missed it well worth a listen it's phenomenal it's my masterpiece <laughs> yeah um, and I did that I had something to eat or no Matt I think I probably took took him out for a quick W N um, L K and then came back made a cup of tea for the boxing the boxing was on in the evening in the UK and I yeah it was they started the show for free which was weird 
This is strange. My Kindle's playing up. Why is my Kindle playing up? Very strange. Search the Kindle. I want to search for... I want to search for magazines. That's what I want to search for. And it's given me nothing. I'm supposed to be a member of the Kindle Unlimited, so there should be a magazine on there. But it's now. Uh, um, I was asked, asked from someone on YouTube if I could uh, put my other stuff. Oh. It's back now, that's weird. The internet just went off, now it's back. So I've got the magazines now. 2,500, apparently. So I... Yeah, someone asked me on YouTube, can I put my other stuff back on YouTube? And I started thinking, okay, you know, the old other stuff like the other non let me boy to sleep stuff. And I sort of spent hours going through it. And then I realised that I'm actually happy sticking to let me boy to sleep. I just felt a huge amount of extra pressure on me to start doing the other stuff and to be working through that when actually in all truthfulness this is I can only I don't know it's just, uh, I can do one thing I mean this one thing I do and if I do one every day it's you know if you include other little bits and bobs I have to do, so you're looking four to five hours a day work. Not really work, is it? But, you know, time. So, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not just moaning today. I'm, I do apologise. Oh, yes, I apologise ever so much. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, I'm not moaning, really. I'm just... My heart is still a little bit razzled from being woken up. Uh, one of my neighbours wanted to know if I was any good at replacing toilet seats. Am I any good at, am I any good at putting on a new toilet seat? Out of all the local neighbours, she must have thought I'm the one that's probably broken the most. I've broken the most toilet seats, so I must be an expert, a whiz. In fact, I can put one in. Two seconds it takes me to put a new toilet seat on. I break them every three days. No. Well, actually, I have broken. I've broken a toilet seat a couple before, but it's... They're not easy. Well, they're not hard to put on, I don't think, but I don't want to touch someone else's toilet. I don't want to touch my own toilet. Definitely don't want to touch someone else's toilet. Ooh. And no, it would it, take me hours. So I was just honest saying, no. I'm, I'm not. So I try I try not to say this stuff out loud, you know, because it is kind of quite negative. But in reality, I'm not, I've never really been the most practical person. The amount of things that I've broken just by unpacking them. I broke the TV when I unpacked it. The the legs that go in the TV. I remember my friend came upstairs. He said, You're, "What's wrong with that?" I said, "What do you mean?" He said, uh, "The back to front. You put the legs in back to front." I said, "Oh, okay." He said, "How did you manage to do that? They're not. They can't fit in that way." And they looked at the back of the TV and I'd split the plastic, split it, because I forced it in. Basically forced it in the wrong hole, basically, or back to front rather. Um, 
it, it's fine. It, but he, he said, why didn't you didn't wait? Why didn't you wait until I was up? Because I think I, he was in bed or something or he was out. Or He said, why didn't you wait until I was here so I could help you? I said, I was excited. I was excited. And I mean, the TV was, it's quite a big TV. I've never had a big TV before. I mean, this is probably one, two, three, four, five, probably six times bigger than the other one I had. But the other one I had was like the size of an ant. So, yeah, probably not that big then. But yeah, it's, it's just the way it is. I've, I had a recording studio thing like the one I got here. And in the first couple of days, I managed to get the digital SIM card thing. It's not a SIM card, but it's the digital card that holds all the information, you know, the tracks. Got it stuck. And I tried to pull it out and I ended up pushing it in further and broke it within like a week of having it. So I had to get another one. Why didn't you send it back? Well, can't send something back that you've broken yourself you know what I mean it's like if it didn't work then yeah of course I need to send it back and get a replacement but I broke it I mean the the, the card was rattling around inside I forced it way too much um, in fact I think I tried to remove it with pliers probably wasn't a good idea Yeah, there was another thing. Um, we had a this place I lived, not before here, but before the place before here. So it would have been 2011. I lived in this room. It was en suite, so it was, it was all right. It was actually a nice room. It was in a new build. Um, Neighbours, a little bit problematic. I had a few issues, but uh, just just bad timing, I think, really. But I was upstairs, and I was right next to the bathroom, the main, well, the only bathroom in the building. So there was one, two, three, three ensuite rooms. So the one below me. And the one opposite me, all en suite. And then there's a bathroom next to my bedroom. So between my, my en suite and the other person's en suite, there was a bed, there was a bathroom. And then next to his en suite bedroom, there was a smaller room, just a, a basic bedroom. I say smaller, I don't know, I didn't go in there, but. It was. It wasn't on suite anyway. It was small, I think. And then downstairs was uh, the one that was below me was non suite. Then next to that one was a really long room. It was a big room, but non no what no on no on bleh, no on suite. So it's no no bathroom in there. And then next to that one was another small room. And then downstairs, there was a, a toilet. It's a communal toilet. And there was a fairly good sized kitchen. Yeah, a nice big kitchen actually. And a living room that no one used because we didn't like each other. Well, they, they, they used it. They just, they went on wasn't around. Everyone else got on really well. Don't want to talk about it, all right? So, and there was a garden as well. So it was a nice house. It was in a nice-ish area. I mean, there was a, yeah. It was one of those weird situations. There was strange stuff going on. Even like the local neighbors. It was one of those a bit like, 
99% of the area was nice. You know, families and everyone just doing their thing. And then a few of the houses were, well, a couple of the houses were dodgy. And yeah, so there was a, a problematic house a few doors up. So police was constantly coming around and stuff like that. Not for me, but for them. Anyway, there was this door. It's all about a door. The whole story is about a door. It's taken me about an hour to get to the fact that it's a door. The bathroom next to me, next to my room, my ensuite room. So I like that room. If it could have been anywhere else, I would have been all right living there if there'd have been a kitchen. If I'd have my own kitchen, you could say, well, that makes it a flat. Well, it made it a studio apartment, I guess, wouldn't it? But it would have been all right. If, I, if I'd had that top floor, maybe I didn't have to talk to anyone else. Anyway, I, I came in. If you go into my door, so you have to go up one, two flights of stairs and then turn right. I was right just there. You go in and there's my double bed in the corner on the right hand side near where the window is there is my set of drawers and I um, I don't think I had any bookcases I had a bunch of books because all, all my stuff was in storage so I had cases and cases of books not bookcases but plastic containers of books but no bookcases at that time I don't think I got I don't think I even got any bookcases but I kind of spread them around a bit on top of the wardrobe and things like that I had a table in there and to the left there was the bathroom and that was uh, yeah, it's a nice, nice bathroom. J just a shower, no bath. So technically, it was a shower room, and the toilet and a sink. Very nice, you know. Very nice, done and everything. The toilet broke after a few days of me being there, and I think the, I think yeah, I think the toilet seat came off as well. Yeah, and they didn't fix a toilet for ages. And they said, oh, you're just going to have to go downstairs. Well, no, go, you can go into the bathroom next door or go all the way downstairs. And I didn't want to do that because I was paying £125 a week for this room. And I didn't move into it because it was an ensuite. I moved into it because it's the only place I could find in the allotted time that I had. It was like my only option, my last option, first and last. I tried a few different places and that was the only place I could actually get into. So anyway, so I'm there. And it got to the point where I had to fill buckets of water up and because you can manually flush a toilet by just pouring a bucket of water down, down into the toilet, you know. So that was kind of what I had to do for probably about five weeks. It really took that long. I was in there for a year. I wasn't in the toilet for a year, um, but I was in that room for a year very long year it was it's quite weird just thinking about it I feel a little bit nostalgic about it now when I think about it because I didn't have a television for a year I did use the internet so I used the I used my laptop to watch 
uh, videos, like downloaded, uh, downloaded um, stuff, sort of like, I don't know if did I watch, maybe it was, did I, or maybe I, I don't know, I'm trying to think, maybe I had access to some streaming services, but 2011, I don't know if Netflix was, how established Netflix was at that point, because when I moved to the next place, although Netflix was available during my three years there, my internet wasn't strong enough to play it. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, Netflix only needs like four megabytes a second. And I didn't get strong enough internet. How, how, how I ever managed to upload videos, I don't know. Phenomenal. But I had a TV in that room. I managed to get a TV. But in the old room, I didn't have a TV. In the, the, the it's a new room. But the room that I had for that year. I don't know why I didn't have a TV. That's what I don't understand because I had a TV in the previous room. Unless I just left the TV there. Or it might have broken because I had a TV, DVD TV and I think it broke. I think it stopped working. Yeah, I think that's what happened. So I'd had it since 2004. So I'd had it a good six years, seven years, and it just, it was like a portable TV with a, what, DVD player. So it was quite cool, but also it wasn't big enough anymore. But for some reason, it didn't bother me not having a TV. But I would download stuff to watch. Uh, one of the things I think I started watching was... If I'm correct, I think it was Game of Thrones. I think that had started. I was definitely watching in, 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 uh, True Blood. So I was watching True Blood. And I don't know, I think Game of Thrones. I don't remember when Game of Thrones started, but I think it was on at that point. In fact, it probably started maybe 2011. Absolutely loved it. But I might be getting my, my dates wrong. I might be getting my dates wrong. I think also... Maybe I didn't get a TV reception. Oh, I don't know. I, I lose track. Oh... Because Blockbusters was still around at that time. I'm pretty sure it was. But it was on its way out. Can't believe Blockbusters. It just it surprises me sometimes when some shops or some... Uh, a company that... Okay, I didn't grow up with Blockbusters. That wasn't my... I wasn't breastfed by blockbusters, you know, I wasn't nurtured by it. It wasn't, it's not something that was a part of my life when I was a child. We didn't have blockbusters where we lived, where I lived. But we did have video shops. And so I kind of just connect it all together. Just the idea of a video shop, which was, to me, those two things that I was that I loved two things that I loved when I was a kid I loved more than two things probably but these are two of my favourite things is hey calm down mate I said calm down the two things is two things he's barking a bit library and video shop not just a video shop that I used to go to when I was like 
9, 10, 11 or whatever, but even when I was like 13, 14, there was a video shop around the corner from me, and I used to go in there, and he used to let me take out adult films and everything. I mean, that they didn't have adult, adult films, nothing gooey, you know what I mean? Nothing, nothing like X-rated. It was just like 18s, so, because most of the martial art movies I used to watch were 18s. And they didn't care, to be honest. So I used to take him out. And we started that one, the two, that, what, what the similarity between the two things is I would literally spend forever in there. I must have looked through every single title, read the information on every single title, which is why I didn't like blockbusters. Because blockbusters used to send, they send it with a blockbusters cover, like the video, or the you know, then DVDs. I want to see the actual DVD. I, I'm not, I want to see the cover, I want to see the description, I want to see who's in it and all that stuff. Anyway, back then they, they had just give you the video. And... I mean, I imagine with Blockbusters, they've probably got one, one case, one picture, and like 100 or 200 videos or DVDs of the same thing. And then just use their own covers to put them in their own cases, which is fair enough. But I don't know, I didn't like that. I used to just I like I loved just to when I was a kid, when I was about me, I don't know, eleven, ten, would look. We'd all go the family as a family. Sometimes all five of us, or how many there was, would go to the video shop. So we'd probably go there in my dad's car or van or whatever. On a Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, maybe Friday after Friday afternoon, Friday in the evening, something. But we'd pick I think they used to do like a three video for the weekend or four videos for the weekend, something like that. Had to bring them back on Sunday or Monday or something. I think the deal was we'd bring them back on the Sunday, so we'd take them back ourselves, or I'm making part of this up. Anyway, it was the best part of the week because I just look forward to it. You go there, and again, it's irresponsible, uh, irresponsible parents from what I'm about to tell you because we used to watch X-rated, well, 18 movies which we shouldn't have watched as a family. And I don't know, I guess... I'm just... I'm just I imagine adults weren't very intelligent back then. I just wonder, like, not inte- not, but just like intelligent in a sense of realizing that kids shouldn't be watching stuff like that. I mean, I liked, I was, you know, I liked it, kind of. You know, I used to watch like horror movies, in Seminoid, Zombie Flesh Eaters. But I didn't get to see some of the horror ones, they wouldn't let me watch it in the evening before going to bed. They'd, they'd watch it while I was in bed. So I'd be in bed with my door open because I didn't like to have the door closed and all I could hear was screaming from the video like as like that made it worse not being able to see what was going on but then the next day I was allowed to watch it after school when I got home so in the winter it was dark anyway so it was like night and I'd be there four o'clock in the afternoon before before dinner, watching Zombie Fleshy on my own. Uh, not every day, because we didn't watch the same movie every day.
but it was very strange. I mean, we used to watch, we used to get videos out midweek as well. It wasn't always on a, on a weekend. But it was just like, I remember once we went through this phase and my dad was getting videos that were, uh, I don't know where, he was like a friend that used to get videos, so he used to get them. And we were having our Sunday lunch in the, I don't know what the room is, I guess the, the, the place we ate our dinner, I guess. That was a room with a table in and stuff. And there was a TV in there. And we watched, during our lunch, a Sunday lunch dinner, uh, oh, what was it? Death Wish 2. Death Wish 2. Which is even worse than Death Wish 1. For the graphicness. It's like, even at that, and I was, what, 10? 11, maybe? 12? 11, 12? It's like, why? I mean, it was an interesting movie. I'm not, you know, but the beginning bit I didn't like. The The rest of the movie was cool because he was, you know, getting his revenge or whatever. Um, but it's like, I'm eating my dinner. This is really putting me off my, my corned beef. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Corned beef is... You know, arguably, I'm going to argue, disgusting. However, if it's cooked properly and it's in a pie, and they call it hash pie or something, it's phenomenal. Isn't it weird? Something that's so disgusting can actually taste so nice if it's cooked and it's prepared in a different way. Anyway. That's an aside. Uh, you're an aside. So, uh, what's it? Yeah, I. There was this door. There was. I'm trying. That's what I was going to come to. This door. Oh. So the two things I used to love. I used to go into the video shop and look at everything. And the same is with the library or a bookshop. Uh, later in life, more the bookshops. When I used to go to every week, most weeks, for for a long period of time. Not you know, depending on the time, you know, different years, different things. But I used to go to the West End, get a tube, get you know uh, a daily ticket which would take me to any of the places I wanted to go to on the, cent on the you know, the uh, underground. I only really wanted to go to Tottenham Court Road because I could get everywhere I wanted to go to from there. So, uh, I mean, I didn't always, but yeah, generally Tottenham Court Road... I could get to Leicester Square, Soho, um, Trafalgar Square, I think, yeah, Oxford Circus, all those different places were within walking distance. So that's what I generally do. I get off at Tottenham Court Road Tube Station from Stratford. And it was just, it was like one, two, three, four, five, about five or six stops. And then I'd get off. I'd go. I'd get. I'd leave us a, a, a specific exit, which would be opposite McDonald's. So, so you had McDonald's across the road, and turn left. 
So if you turn left, and you walk, we're going back, you know, 500 years now, so probably changed. In fact, I know it has because I've been back since, and it's it's not the same. Go up the road, and there was, uh, uh, I don't know if it was a Waterstones or was a book, etc. I can't remember. But it was a bookshop. So it's quite a big bookshop. Everything's big in the West End. All the bookshop, all the shops are pretty big. So I used to go in there, but that wasn't my favourite bookshop. I'd go in there. I'd include it. That was... I suppose it was a little bit like having a... You know... I guess... Having five... Brown-haired children and one ginger. Kind of, you know, I had to include the ginger one. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm joking. I've got ginger in my family. I had a ginger beard. I did. I had a ginger beard. And the, the ginger bits went grey first. It's not fair. Couldn't believe it. What's going on? The Kindle's updating itself. Okay, blimey. Go away. Go away. Put it over there. So, yeah, my ginger beer. It, the, it's very so. People say, like, your, why is your, why is your beer the different colour to your hair? But then I did have ginger bits in the front of my hair and at the side. They also went grey first. Weird, it's strange. It's the Irish, it's the Celtic in me. It's the Irish in me, probably. My nan was Irish, her brother was ginger. Um, three of my cousins, I think, got ginger kids. So, you know. I think, I don't know, I think I might have been ginger when I was born. And then, what was it, my brother? Someone in my family, one me or my brothers, was ginger when we were born, but we were told that it didn't, that it just wore off and we became like dark, like brown hair. But it turned out that they were putting dye in the shampoo. Um, it's not true. It's not true. I don't know why I'm saying this. <laughs> Why, why is the head and shoulders brown <laughs> instead of blue? Blue! So, this door, right, the door was next to, the bathroom is next to the room that I had. And it kept clicking, slamming. People would slam the door and it'd do it on its own. But like a loud click, like really and I'd hear it early hours of the morning, late at night, and it just used to annoy me. It used to annoy me. So I decided to get practical. I decided to get in touch with my practical side and decided to remove, shave off some of the wood from the door. I purchased a plane. Okay. You might think, well, what's that? How's that going to help with the door? Yeah, great if you want to travel to another country. No, not that kind of plane. I wouldn't, you know, a plane, a wood thing, so you can, you know, you can shave wood off of a uh, wood. <laughs> a plane, you know, it's it's a thing that you use. I don't. Know, it's got a handle. I bought. I can't believe I actually bought one of those just for this. And I decided to give it a go and try and shave it off. I did some, made sure I clean up after myself. I did it when there's no one around because I didn't want anyone to know that what I was up to because I thought, well, I don't know if this is okay to do or not. Well, um. Okay, all I want to, all I'm going to say is I got a little bit carried away, and 
I got a knock at my bedroom door and one of the tenants is saying, uh, do you know where the door is, where the bathroom door is? I said, it's there. I said, where? It's there, look. Oh. It's shrunk. And it was just this little door just attached. It's a thin little thing attached to the to the hinges. I didn't realise quite what I was doing. And they said, oh, who, do you know who did that? I said, I don't know. I said, well, why have you got a plane in your hand? I said, um, do you want the long story or the or the story involving glue? So, oh, and she said, don't worry about it. And she went away. But practical stuff just I've never been you know not always been great at that stuff I've broken so many things just by trying to put them together and I'm amazed I'm amazed at how many things now don't even have plugs anymore or batteries or anything just something that needs a plug or needs batteries surely should be sent should be with them including the price send some like they used to do send some crappy batteries that might last like three hours but at least at least have some batteries but to not have a plug I mean there was a time I think the iPhone started doing it where the plug was a foldable one so the pins folded down and you can push them up. I mean, I remember once, <laughs> just talking about, I got an iPhone. This is back in this room as well, 2011. It was the first iPhone I ever had. And was it an iPhone? It wasn't an iPhone. Was it an iPhone? It was a phone. Maybe it was an iPhone. Or maybe it was... It was a phone, it was a mobile phone. It exploded. The plug exploded, not the actual phone. I plugged it in and pull. It didn't go pull, because that's not a very good explosion sound, is it? But it went bang. It didn't go bang either. Like bang. Um, waving its little hands. But it was it's a little bit scary, to be honest. I mean, it's just a plug. It's a plug. I mean, a plug should you plug it in should work. I tell you what's even weirder. In now, I don't know about America. I know that the plugs are too thonged, and I had to put an adapter on my equipment when I went over to Thailand. The plugs didn't even stay in hardly on their own so loose is that how plugs are in America because here they are super secure you push a plug in it takes effort to get it out like it's almost sealed into the into it you know in a sense it's not but it feels like it's very you know, there's no room for wiggle with the pins, and when it's actually pushed all the way in, that's it. You can't you can't get it out without a little bit of effort. Or I'm just really weak. It could be one. It could be that. Yeah, I found that a little bit weird. Those two pronged ones, very loose, not secure at all. Not, in, you know, did, didn't, because I'm used to a plug, you push it in and it's really tight. Those two prong ones, loose. Even the ones that went in, just like still, like you could pull it out, like so easily. It's like literally just really, nah, don't like that. Anything that's attached to electricity, I want it to be secure. I want it to be proper 
nice and tightly compacted and other words that mean the same thing so McDonald's was opposite Tottenham Court Road tube station but opposite that if we go back to 91 there was HMV in fact in fact I might be wrong but I'm pretty sure the HMV and Virgin were next to each other like directly next to each other in the early 90s and both huge stores uh, I think um, K K was it KP Max? Was that the close the close shop, KX Max or something, that became one of those shops in the in the later years, the late nineties? Because I think Virgin closed, or HMV closed, one of them. But at the time, it was brilliant. And, you know, back then, yeah, CDs were in, but albums were also in. CD singles were also in, still around, you know. And there was loads of stuff. T-shirts, merchandise. The book collections were really good. Uh, and the comedy albums were great. Uh, loads of American comedy. Uh, and I used to collect. I mean, I used to go to London in 1990 every time I got paid on a, on a uh, once a month I got paid and I was doing a night shift during 1990 in a factory and I used to go every time I got paid if it was well I don't know the, the following Saturday basically I went up to London so I stayed up so I got up I got home Saturday morning after being working all night I go straight I had something to eat and I go straight to London and I'd go to those shops I'd go to uh, HMV I would go to Virgin I would go to Tower Records which I think was near Trafalgar Square I do believe and there might have been another place as well can't think off the top of my head there was there was a place that had comedy albums uh, so and I used to go there and not just comedy albums but I would buy DVD not DVDs I'd buy videos as well like of live con condoms live concerts so I'd have records so I wouldn't buy DV I wouldn't buy CDs I'd buy tapes if that's all they had I didn't have I never bought a CD didn't even know didn't know anything about CDs they weren't re they were a thing but they were kind of a new thing back then and I didn't I didn't bother with it so, but I, I, so I got vinyl albums of, or tapes of like Woody Allen, Lenny Bruce, I don't know, Emo Phillips, Steve Martin, George Carlin, Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Stephen Wright, Sam Kinison, Andrew Dice Clay, and then some of the older ones, uh, like the people from the 60s and 50s and 60s who'd done, uh, is it Bob Newhart, um, Red Fox, there was... Joanne, Joan, Joan. I can't think of a surname. It's terrible. Um, and then did I say Emo Phillips? I did, didn't I? 
Stephen Wright, Emma Phillips. There was others. There was others. Uh, but then, you know, some of them had multiple, multiple um, albums, like George Carlin. I think at that point he had about 12 albums or something, or maybe less. But he had quite a few albums. One was called Class Cat Clown. Class Clown. And he... So he he was probably the most... Um, what was I? Active, prolific comedians, stand-up comedians, possibly in American history, I would say. I mean, Bill Cosby brought out loads of albums as well. And they were huge, hugely popular. So I didn't realise... Because I used to watch him on the Cosby Show, like probably everyone else, you know, we used to in the early eighties, well, all the way through till early nineties, I suppose. And I used to love it. I used to love it, especially um, Arnold. <laughs> he used to make me laugh. You know, we were talking about Dad. I used to crack me up, and then uh, Bill Cosby. I pity the fool. It was it was great, but he's. I didn't know. Just how famous he was. Until I came over his albums. And then, it wasn't really until, the internet kicked it. No, I had a book actually. And I had a book. I think it was called After the Laughter, something like that. And it was all about, I bought it in 91. I think I lent it to someone, I didn't get it back. And it had all this information of old comedians, uh, all the way through to like more modern ones stand-up comedians and it was just amazing you know it's like pre after the war the second world war you know sort of like the early 50s and there was all these coffee places and um jazz clubs and there'd be comedy you know in the 50s and then in the 60s uh where I guess like in the fifties, probably Steve Allen would have been in, and uh, it's just the sixties, of course. Richard Pryor was doing his comedy in the late sixties. Bill Cosby was a huge star because Richard Pryor copied Bill Cosby. In fact, he said he earned a good living from being Bill Cosby for about five years, and then one one night. His um, he did a gig. He did it. He did a gig, right? Richard Pryor did this gig. It was a charity gig. They asked him to go along, and it was a charity for uh, equality for gay people. And he he said, "Yeah, okay." So it was a quality for gay for for gay people because it back in the this is in the seventies I think like early early seventies and or maybe middle I don't know probably early seventies he'd had some albums out he was well known but he was very clean clean comedian and he'd been on um, I think Steve Allen TV show in America and. He was he was basically doing his version of uh, Bill Cosby, but he did it a different way, you know, because he had a different well, he just had a different way about him. So he went on stage. He well, he went. It turned up at this gig. It's a big, I think, outdoor gig. A lot of people were there, and he was a star. He was one of the stars, you know. So he turned up there to support gay rights. 
and then he realized that the the black dancers and the white dancers were segregated the black dancers were segregated and treated differently to the white dancers put into a smaller room treated not treated well so he saw that he says okay so I'm here to do this is his well kind of I'm paraf paraphrasing his words but so I'm here to support equal rights for gay people but we're not getting equal rights for me and for my sisters so he went on stage and he went on a rant he bent over and pulled his trousers down and basically said you can kiss that my my <laughs> yeah and he walked off stage and he didn't perform for something like two years and when he came back a different performer that's when the real real Richard Pryor came out the real like stand up but I was surprised I was surprised when I discovered Richard Pryor's comedy because I hadn't heard it but I heard Eddie Murphy talking about it and I didn't understand what Eddie Murphy was talking about because I watched Raw and Eddie Murphy, and this is what, 80, ugh, 88, I watched Raw. Yeah, 88. And I thought, but he's talking about Richard Pryor swearing and stuff. And I thought, he doesn't swear, because any, f that's what I thought, and then, then I looked it up and I got some DVDs, not DVDs, I got some videos and like, wow. It's like, you know, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I got his albums and they were just so funny. I was like, how did I not know this? Because I knew who Richard Pryor was. He was one of the biggest stars in movies for a while. You know, uh, for me, things like Brewster's Millions, uh, Stir Crazy, any of the movies he did with Gene Wilder, for me, were brilliant. I think he did four movies with him. Uh, plus he did The Toy. That was funny. The thing about that is he was, he basically was a toy for this little kid who was getting paid to just basically just be with this kid and do whatever the kid said and the kid was it was a posh posh family and he was introduced uh, his name's it says, it says Master Bates and he starts like it's just like yeah it's funny but so he was but that was after his transition of turning like naughty comedy he had been, he'd been doing, you know, so it's weird, he went like super clean, dirty on stage, and then he was this, it was like, not, I say buffoon, uh, like a clown, he was a clown, wasn't he, kind of like very physical, very, always acted kind of timid and scared and in a lot of his movies and he was funny he was physically funny funny voice funny face he was just really I loved Richard Pryor's movies uh, especially him and Gene Wilder I mean there's been lots of double acts you know not not actual double acts double acts but you know when two people have been put together in movies and it's just worked it's just been a lot of those different people I suppose um, Jerry and Dean, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis was an example. They were just put together and like it became, unless they were double act beforehand, I don't know, maybe they were. 
but there's been a few movies where people have been like they keep getting back together because it works I think that Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder were among the best ever that I've seen they just worked because they were both the clowns there was no straight man there was not one funny one and one you know it's like they were both really funny and they were both kind of kind of cowardly and buffoonish and physical and I don't know it's it's just silly but brilliant I mean I still I do I've seen Gene Wilder in interviews very serious I know he's, he's no longer with us but I've seen him in it he's just really because he, he married is it Rita Rudner who was another comedy star so he was married to her but he, I think he was very not I wouldn't expect him to be exactly the same as he is in his movies off stage you know as such but he seemed very very different considering he was brilliant it was a brilliant comedy actor to me I, I just found him well it's, it wasn't just me was it I mean clearly producers and directors and the general public also found him to be pretty pretty good I mean young Frankenstein such a great movie and I was surprised when I found out that what's, what's that TV show everyone loves everyone loves Raymond so his dad in that was young Frankenstein but I remember Frank, young, young Frankenstein being this huge man and he wasn't well, he wasn't little but he wasn't like really really tall and same look same face same grumpy face <laughs> it's like wow so that was strange and did you know this is something I didn't realise until it was pointed out to me on I don't know maybe some TV show or something do you know the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once won Oscars a couple of years back hugely successful movie I struggled to follow it a little bit to be honest it was a lot it was literally everything all at once happening I struggled to f it was a little bit overload for my very slow brain but it's, it's a good movie and it's it, as I said it won Oscars and it was you know really one of the biggest movies of the year I didn't realise I had not that the, he looked familiar the main actor there's two was three but there's two females one male the male just looked familiar he even sounded a bit familiar I couldn't place him couldn't place him at all and then I found out it might have been through research might have been through just looking through stuff and realising wait a minute wow I don't know but it's recently I found out so the male start of everything everywhere all at once or every whatever it's called that one he was in he was basically the kid in Indiana Jones movies the um, Chinese or a, a, yeah, what, a Chinese child you know Indiana and he was you know he was in the first at least the first two movies maybe the first three I don't know looks the same and now he's probably in his late 40s because thinking about it he probably or about my age he was probably about my age maybe a little bit younger when he was in those movies so I was what Indiana Jones was about 1980 I think so I would have been 10 9 or 10 he was probably 7 or 8 so there's not a lot of difference. We're about the same kind of age. But it's like, wow. Right, Vinny started barking. 
I'm going to go. See ya.